Today we had the longest um, presentation by Anthony. He had 262 slides or something along those lines. Now, I think mine is the shortest, being uh, eight slides, including the intro and the outro. Um, so there you go. You can go and break early. I know, it's getting late. So um, I'm a language blogger. I'm a local. I write in Hungarian about my language learning experience. And uh, I try to inspire Hungarian people to learn uh, foreign languages. We are not really the best at. They say we are um, somewhere uh, along those um, you know, last ones in the EU. So we, we need a bit of a, you know, help. So, but today I want to talk about another thing uh, that is um, sports. Uh, many people have talked about languages and language learning at this conference and I want to put my personal spin on that, um, being an Iron Man. And I'll get to that uh, in a second, what it is, not the Tony Stark way. <laughs> so, um, the Ironman is the, one of the toughest competition, sports competition in the world. That is, you have to uh, swim 3.8k and then uh, cycle 180k and then run a marathon at the end just for fun. And uh, <laughs> that you have to do uh, in 16 hours. Yeah. And, um, yeah, in one day. So, and I had exactly ten months to do to prepare for that from scratch. And when I say from scratch, I think that redefines the English phrase starting from scratch because I was baby on that. So, um, and why I want to talk about this because along those uh, ten months, I found I found out a lot of things about myself and motivations and goals so and I want to just do a bit of analogy between language learning and sports and not just in a way that uh, you know if you do sports then you're gonna live longer <laughs> okay 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 well um, the first thing that I learned from sports is shifting the focus is crucial at least it was for me um, from sports um, Two years ago, uh, when I signed up for the Ironman, um, yeah, I, my story starts where I, I was always overweight. Um, I wasn't fat, but I was constantly mocked by my friends. So um, I had been trying to lose weight in my whole life, and I, you know, believe me, this is not going to be a pitch about you know buying those lose weight um, pills. But um, so. When I tried to focus on something that was very negative, losing weight, uh, it didn't really work. I tried every kind of diet, it didn't really work, and, and at least didn't get permanent results. And one day, um, actually many of my friends had finished Ironman, and I thought that, okay, how about if I just switch, uh, yeah, switch my focus to something, from something very negative to something awesome, become an Ironman. And that worked, because by the time I'd be an Ironman, I probably would have a decent body. So um, the goal was uh, becoming an Ironman and uh, just finish their life, and it worked. So from the language uh, perspective, uh, with German, uh, I, I, in Hungary you you have to um, yeah you have to uh, learn German at primary school, and um, we they t tried to teach you, but um, we are very good at resisting. And we're not really, it didn't really work. And, um, and um, so up until this January, I, I didn't really know German. And um, on the 7th of January, I thought, okay, um, I'm gonna just um, have a better focus that is going to Berlin and have a blast instead of, you know, I have to learn German. I don't have to. I just want to go to Berlin and have awesome beer with my cousin and her friends. And this was actually the goal. I didn't really care about anything else. And that happened, and it was awesome. Uh, and that, was, that project was actually inspired by Benny, and that happened in 90 days. Um, I'll tell you a bit uh, later about that. Okay, this thing doesn't seem to work from afar. Okay, the second thing was um, that got me thinking was getting rid of the responsibility, and why is that good? Uh, it 
at first it might sound um, interesting, but when you remove yourself from the cycle of um, responsibility, then you don't have the chance to go back. Then you have to achieve that goal. And at sport, like, what, like that, I signed up for the Ironman. That was a painful um, process itself because it cost more, uh, it's about $200 in Hungary. And it's a lot if you live in Hungary. Um, and I announced it to my friends and my family. Um, my father's exact words were, you're crazy, son. Uh, thanks for the encouragement. Um, and then I just designed a roadmap for the next 10 months. So basically I did a training, I don't know, plan for day by day. And um, this actually got rid of the responsibility because every day I woke up, I knew exactly what I had to do. And I just needed to follow. I didn't have the responsibility to go back because I burned the bridges. So by the same analogy uh, with languages, um, just stick to German. Um, on the 7th of January, I announced it on my blog that I would uh, learn to a decent level German um, in 90 days. 90 days. And um, then on the very same day, I booked the flight ticket to Berlin. And that was it. And that was a pain because they charged the wrong credit card and stuff like that. But thanks, Lufthansa. And, and then what I did was just write up a 90 day battle plan. So day by day, I knew what I was going to do. So I didn't need to think. The responsibility wasn't with me. And then the biggest um, thing that helped me was actually I paid my tutors ahead um, in advance. So I got a few tutors, German tutors, and paid them in advance for two or three months. And then in that way, I didn't have, didn't have the chance to go back because then I would lose money. So they, they would have to deal with me day by day. And that, that's it. The responsibility wasn't with me. Um, and that kept me on track. OK, using everything at my disposal, um, I could say effectiveness or creativity or call it whatever you like. Um, at sport, that doesn't seem to work. I should just stay here. OK, uh, so the one thing that I was always thinking that how can I progress the most in the least possible time frame? Um, I'll go back to sports and then I'll just do the analogy in language learning, just, you know, just to give you a heads up. Um, with sports, uh, Ironman requires intensive training at least six times a week. But that just gives you the swimming, uh, running and cycling part. But also to, to finish a 16 hour race, you have to have a very strong skeletal muscle system. And for that, you have to go to the gym which I hate, and I don't have time for that. So what I did was, I found out push-ups are really good for improving your skeletal muscle system. So um, I'm an interpreter um, and translator. I work from home. So every time my computer hanged or I downloaded something, <laughs> never happened. Uh, every time um, something like happened, something might happen, then I just got down on my knees and did five push-ups. And that's it. 10, 20 seconds, and then got back to work. And uh, by the end of the day, I was able to do 50 or 60 push-ups. And that was it. That was enough to develop a strong enough um, skeletal muscle system. And that's it. I didn't have to go to gym. So when it comes to languages, I, I try to find these uh, small things that add up and uh, make your learning a bit more efficient. Um, the one, one of the biggest was for me to find the ideal study time. Uh, I was an idol, but lately I just uh, got to a routine when I have to get, get up at early, at uh, 6 or 6.30. And I found that after two coffees, I'm ready to go. And I, I just, you know, sit down and learn for an hour, and then I open my email, but not before that. So first thing in the morning, what I do is learn, and then after meal, after lunch, we, we tend to eat a big lunch in Hungary. After lunch, um, I had my um, speaking practice with my tutors, 
and then I went to bed. Um, that's actually the third. Okay, so I went to bed after the practice sections, so I would have a little power nap. That was 15, it's about 15, uh, 20 minutes, and uh, that is for to consolidate to learn stuff uh, better. I know that Benny is a big fan of that, and um, yeah, it, it, it does work. So these small things, uh, flash card apps, I'm pretty sure many of you know those. Um, Anthony said that, I'm not a big fan of Anki. Um, People only use it. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, so yeah, um, I actually constantly use it because um, it's, on my, it's on my phone and um, you know when I walk around the city um, and it, there's a traffic light that's red, I just you know, grab my phone and I just um, review five cards and that's it. By the end of the day, I can get through maybe two or three hundred cards and, it's, and that was a bad time. I couldn't have done that. So... Um, yeah, uh, one of the last ones, vitamins. Um, I found that taking B1 is really good when you want to retain uh, things better. Uh, just try it if you want, it might work for you too. And uh, the last one, love that, I got that from my girlfriend. Um, so during study sessions, I chew gums because that gives you more oxygen to your brain and just helps to, you know, memorize things better. That's it, it's free, try. <laughs> So these small things all add up. And you don't have to do everything, but they do add up. So try a few and try to, just like my, the previous speaker, Svetlana, told us, try to find those little hacks and they, they will help. They will help, definitely add up. Okay, moving on. Another interesting idea that I found that worked for me is looking back instead of looking ahead, that might sound interesting. Um, so, the sport analogy. Um, to be honest, I, I hate swimming, really. And um, <laughs> when, I, when I signed up for the Ironman, I was, I'm, I'm being honest, I, I couldn't swim 200 meters, really not. So, I was just trying to get a hold of the side of the pool and you know, get out of it and, you know, breathing like an asthmatic dog. And um, <laughs> it, that actually happened. And um, I knew that um, I had six months, uh, by that time I was into the training for four months, so I had still six months to, you know, to get to 3.8 somehow. Um, and um, what I did was I woke up to, to my friends who did the Ironman and I, I watched videos on YouTube and I read up on it and, and, and I tried to get a hold of what, what, what was going on in swimming. And um, after one month of swimming, um, maybe two or three times a week, I got to one kilometer, which was okay. But um, at that point, I stopped. And I thought, okay, that's nice. That's very nice that I can you know, swim one kilometer, but that doesn't really get me to 3.8. But then I thought, okay, if I start worry, worrying about the 3.8 now, not a good idea. I'm not really sure about that. But I just what I did was look back. So in one month, um, I went to from zero to one kilometer, and I, I thought that okay, this is not too bad. And I gave myself a pat on the back, and um, I used it analogy with uh, German too. So. <sighs> I must, I must drink something, sorry. <laughs> Sportsman, Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you must drink a lot of liquid. <laughs> okay, so, are the thingy, sorry. So, um, so I studied German uh, intensively for three months and then I flew to Berlin and I met up with a German language blogger, Emmanuel, and um, we exchanged a few emails in English, but the first time we, meet, we, we met uh, in person then he asked me so whether I wanted to speak German or English and I said, oh, of course German. And so I went to a pub, surprisingly, and then we had a three-hour conversation in German. Well. 
at least he was having it. I, I was struggling, <laughs> but I was thoroughly enjoying my struggles. And um, on the way home, completely sober, um, on the bus, I flipped out my phone and I thought, I'm so into German now, I'm going to improve it right now. So I started to read a book, uh, an e-book on my phone, and I can't even remember what the name was. And I opened it, the very first page, and uh, okay, I don't, I don't really understand what's going on in this book. Um, but shit, I don't know German. And uh, okay, this is a very similar situation to my swimming. So I stopped right there, completely sober, and uh, I thought that okay, there's plenty ahead of me in German. I certainly couldn't, you know, discuss microbiology. That's for sure. Yeah, but if I look back, in three months, what I achieved, it's not too bad. I, I had an awesome conversation, spontaneous conversation with, with a native speaker, and uh, that was awesome. And I, I stopped and I gave myself a pat on the back. So, yes, I, I encourage you to sometimes just, you know, stop and stop worrying about what's ahead and just give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, and the last take, and then you can go and break, uh, was from the Ironman for me. So I'll now go back to the sports analogy again, uh, that this is not a competition. Ironman was really not. I was surprised, and I want to learn that at the competition. So uh, imagine 500 people there, and no one was racing for the first position. They were all friends. They are all supporting each other. I couldn't believe it. I was, I was riding on my bike and the pros were passing by and they, they turned and they smiled at me and they said, good job, keep up. And, okay, what was that? And after the next turn, one of them just gave me an energy bar because they saw me that I struggled with shit and, and I was struggling. And in, the, in these hours of hell, you know, they just gave you a smile and, and that kept you going. So they really supported each other, and um, they were there to help. So no one was racing, and this is awesome, I think. By the same analogy in language, <coughs> uh, so when it comes to anything, I'm kind of a do-it-yourself guy. I don't really like to you know, rely on others. I'm not really a team player. and. Um, you know, but I started learning Spanish, and I you know, bought these courses and books, and I just thought that, okay, I'm going to close the door of my room, and then two years later, I'm going to come out as a, <laughs> no, I'm going to come out as a na na nearly um, native speaker, which presumably didn't really happen. And uh, then, then I thought, with German, I needed a different approach. So that's why I actually got into the community and I tried to find help and I asked for help and they gave me and uh, we tend to forget that uh, languages are a community sport so we can't by definition we can't do that by ourselves and, uh, that was a big revelation for me because you know I didn't really like the idea that so there's something that I can't do and um, this is why I think these conferences are awesome and thank you Richard and Luca for organizing the whole event because uh, what we can do here is uh, you know just get the word out and encourage each other and encourage others who are not that big fan of languages to learn more languages and um, I think that's the biggest take and uh, my last founding was um, when it came to language learning a sport that they are just like sex um, it's okay to do it by yourself, but it's much better to do it with others. <laughs> Thank you. For once, I think I'm actually lost for words. <laughs> what said the people, uh, dare I say what you said about languages? 
No, I'm not going on record. Please switch the camera off. <laughs> can, can I? Can I? I, I, no, I okay. don't even know what's going to come out of your mouth. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you do. That, that guy there said that languages are my bitches. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> They also say that I'm a language whore. <laughs> that basically, yeah, I pimp myself out to different languages. <laughs> now, I hope you've got some really awful questions for him. <laughs> Ask anything you want, embarrass him, do whatever you want, and all this will be on camera. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just for my benefit. <laughs> Love you. <coughs> Who's first? Thank you. <laughs> Come on, you've really you've got to destroy this guy. <laughs> uh, sorry, at one moment you were talking about the point of uh, getting rid of responsibility by, um, I don't know, going to the gym, make it, uh, buying some subscription, and that means like if you will not use it, you just lost money. Uh, but we all know that actually not only in the language courses but at the gym too there are people who buy a subscri uh, subscription go there just one two three times and then forget it uh, so of course they kind of understand they lose money but then they yeah t talking from my personal experience like okay that's not that big money and I'm too lazy I don't have time now and okay let's do it right next time blah 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 uh, did you do some additional uh, recipes to self-motivate at this point? Yeah, thanks for the question. That's actually a good one. Um, I totally get it. And um, I think the most what we can do is just to, to, to make the whole process as painful less as it's possible, if that's a word. Uh, because with the, with the battle plan, I, I, what I did was that um, I wrote it up ahead so I don't I didn't have to think every day what should I do today so that made the whole process a bit less painful because then I just needed to to follow that and I think the point is that everyone has to look from the perspective that how can I make the whole process less painful and it's just my way of going and um, you might have your own take but um, I think that that was a, that was that was the big one for me, like you know, just designing ahead, and that kept me on track. Does it answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, so, because Richard uh, said to ask you embarrassing questions, <laughs> I will I will ask you a question. I, might uh, I was answer. asked I was asked myself many many times. Uh, so people ask my, me uh, many times. Uh, so, how many languages did you learn through girls, and how many girls did you get through languages? <laughs> uh, the last time I was counting, it was about 3,000-ish. <laughs> uh, That's just on the endangered list, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to go back to the question about organizing your structure for three months, and you also mentioned, I believe, 90 days. One of the things I found helpful about that is if you have a general plan for 90 days or whatever that is, uh, allow yourself to change it after two weeks and say, oh, this isn't working, because sometimes you have this plan and you say, oh, fuck it, I'm gonna, it's not working yet. It's gonna be a complete failure if I look at this. And I definitely appreciate your looking back at what you've achieved and then taking that piece and then re-organizing uh, your plan, but keeping that, that overall goal in mind, I think is extremely helpful. Well, thank you very much. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, I just had a quick question. You said it's okay to do it by yourself, but it's better to do it with others. I was wondering if you could just uh, elaborate on that. <laughs> <laughs> what, once again, what, was that inspired by Richard? <laughs> I have a halo around my head. <laughs> uh, for, for now, I'm, I'm speechless, just like... Richard was <laughs> Hi, I'm curious how Thank you found you, Richard. <laughs> so for your future sports and languages, are you going to combine them at all? I know for me, one of the things I do 
is I watch my telenovelas, my Mexican soap operas at the gym, and it actually it's a motivation to go to the gym. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> my second question is, is how did the Iron Man go for you? Yeah. I managed to survive, thank you. Um, well, I finished it in 15 hours, 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay, so well, I would have one question on. Sorry, uh, what was the, the uh, first question? I'm uh, sorry, but I think I didn't answer that. Are you combining now your oh. languages and your sports for your future? Oh, thank you. Um, what I found that um, I'm pretty, uh, how do they say that, task oriented? I can't really move, um, multi, how do they say that? Multitasking. Uh, multitasking, yeah, I can't. So I, I, I tried to, you know, listen to podcasts while I was running, didn't really work for me. So the answer is. No, if that you know, answers your question. Okay, so hi. Uh, firstly, hi. I would like to thank you for sharing your personal story with us. Uh, thank you. It was very impressive, your, your, willing, uh, your, your will to persist. And uh, I would have a question, uh, because maybe so, some, of, some of people might, might have observed that, uh, for example, like me, uh, I feel extremely sometimes tired when, when, I, when, when I go study languages before. At evening, so usually I fell asleep like after maybe ten minutes reading the book. So actually, uh, I found it very useful. Like, like you mentioned, that in, in the morning to to firstly to, to start to study and then to open, for example, like Gmail account and, and clear all these like mailbox. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I would like to ask also like uh, what what kind of hints would you give us um, how how we can study languages on on the go? For example, uh, when moving, because I feel that. Um, for example, I, I feel that uh, the thinking process is, is slower when we, for example, sit on or where, where we lie down. And actually, it's maybe our thinking process is faster when we move because it's maybe get, mm -hmm. getting some oxygen. Yeah, I've heard that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good so, question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Thanks. Yeah, I'm kind of a technical person, so I, I have a smartphone and um, I like to, uh, there's tons of applications in that. But uh, what I did, was that to set up the system the way that it allows me to, to study almost immediately when I have five seconds. So, for example, I set up my music player on the phone as in just have to push a button and then it um, continues the podcast where I left it off. And um, for another, I don't know, three seconds of saving time, I, I'm planning to actually buy a, a Bluetooth headset so I don't have to fiddle with the, you know, the uh, headphones. So um, this is just to uh, hmm, on the go, yeah. Hmm, I don't know. Um, maybe that one, that that too. Or does it answer your question? Yeah. I mean, uh, for example, uh, do, do you think it's uh, we can really like As I said, uh, I can't really focus on two things. I have to focus on the running. I, I can't do self talk at all. Um, I mean, while running. But um, uh, I, I can do that while I cycle. So I don't know how that works, but uh, that's a good one. Uh, because I, I don't use public transport, I use my bike to get around the city. And I actually do self talk uh, while I'm riding. So if you see a uh, crazy person in Budapest cycling around and talking to himself, that's me, basically. I think we've seen you. <laughs> okay, final question, and then we'll have a longer break because it's a bit warm in here, and I appreciate you've been sitting here for a long time. So I hope you'll enjoy a 20-minute break instead of a 10-minute break. Well, first, thank you. That presentation was very good. Um, that combination of sport and languages was very interesting for me. And I have also a question about that fact that learning alone is good, but supporting each other is better. So, uh, do you think? Uh, personally, uh, that the more people you learn with, the better? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> Richard, was it you? No. No. no um, okay, thank you. So, I think, uh, I think the if I can say that the quality is more important than the quantity, <laughs> can, I, can I say that or 
Will that be cut out? Right. So what sort of quality and quantity are you talking about? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> I'm more interested in the answer. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so it's actually a good question. Um, when I, I was searching for my tutors, I interviewed them heavily. So, and, and I didn't want to take the very first one because that doesn't mean that if someone just speaks a target language, then, then he is good for me. And um, this is why I got through a few of them and I just sorted out what didn't work for me. And, and um, this is how I built a little community around me. And of course, um, I announced the whole thing on my blog and there were a, a few uh, readers who, who were really keen to help. And um, I just, uh, I had to see um, whose method works for me. And I, I tried to work uh, with them. This is, this is the same when, when I'm, I'm a teacher, I teach English. And um, I only work with those who, whom I can work with. Because nothing was working for everyone. That, uh, many have said this uh, at this conference too, that there's no push of a button method that works for everyone. So um, just need to find your own and you know, find your own community, your own method, and you know, things like that. That's it. Thank you, Valin. You, uh, you defended yourself well. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.